Hello again, wrestling fans. I'm Scott Casper, along with Tony Hager. This is Global Wrestling News. Let's head back to Tbilisi this week. That's where the U.S. locked up seven medals to close out the Cadet World Championships. Let's start with Kurt McHenry, Twitter handle Kurt McNasty. Well, McNasty, he was an opening decision in two tech balls. That's how he got to the finals, where he met up with Mahir Mamanzada of Azerbaijan. Losing late on criteria, McHenry came up clutch and gave the U.S. its first gold medal of the tournament. So now they, the guy said that you were uh, pretty uh, tuned up last night. You were ready to roll and dialed in, you know. Yeah. How did that kind of transfer over into today, you know, really being really focused at the day before? Um, I don't know. I look at it like it's my job. It's like I got to be a professional. I got to take it serious. So that's what I try and do. I didn't come out here and waste the whole summer of wrestling the whole time. I know a lot of people don't want to wrestle all summer. They want to be on the beach. And so I wasn't trying to make put that summer to waste and waste my parents' time and my coaches and well, all that stuff. So I was just focused. I didn't want to come out here and play any games. I wanted to get the job done. I mean, I'm going to be honest, Tony. I did not see McHenry winning a world title. Am I the only kid on the block that was sleeping on this guy? Yeah, I mean, not a, not a, a name a lot of people are familiar with. Uh, this is a rising star at the cadet level, and we're working on trying to build these cadets up. Winning a gold medal puts you at the top. That is a name that everyone's going to remember, and that's a Twitter handle that I'm going to remember, Kurt McNasty. McNasty. Yeah, I like I that. that. So, uh, you know, what was really good about seeing this cadet was he didn't get flustered when people right. got in on his legs. He has a really good defense, so uh, sometimes at this level, you can be over-aggressive and not be aware of your defense, but he did a really good job in uh, Georgia with being able to fend off attacks. All right, from McNasty, we go to Arusha. It was his first international appearance. Vito Arusha outscored his first three appearances opponents by some 23 points and then moved on into the finals to face Amir Hussein Musadi of Iran. Aruja again got his offense going, but so did the Iranian. Musadi took the 12-8 decision and Aruja took silver. I really came into this tournament not really knowing what to expect, never having really any actual overseas experience before. So coming here and like testing the waters was really, you know, enlightening for me in some ways. I could really focus on now what I need to learn on and um, what I'm good at, so. What do you think was was different from the international perspective? It's, it's not, nothing really that different. It's just, it's something unknown to like people from the US. So we feel like the sense of like danger, like, oh, there's some foreign people coming out here. It's so, like, we need to like prepare ourselves, but they're just regular wrestlers, you know? They don't have any magic technique. It's all the same, same wrestling, you know? This is something that we do see quite often at the cadet level. Crazy aggressive guy. Vito uh, got up big points on his opponents, but if you remember before these takedown rules, we saw this at the senior level. People would get so aggressive and they just forget about that defense. So learning at a, at a young age is going to be very, very important. Somebody that these guys, I think, need to they need to learn from, Scott, is Jaden Cox. This is somebody... Jaden Cox has got great offense, but he's got crazy great defense, and that's what it takes to be a gold medalist at the uh, at the international level. So take a look at Jaden Cox. That's going to be a guy that everybody needs to learn a little bit more from. Hey, we got gold and silver. How about a little bronze? Both David Carr and Jacob Warner lost early on criteria, but came back through the repertoire to finish third. Carr cruised to a 7-2 victory over Galstian of Armenia, while Warner scored an 11-point shutout over Jacob Zamula of Poland. Killer performance there in the bronze medal match. Uh, talk about the match a little bit and getting your hand raised at the end, what that means to you. <sighs> felt great. You know, I, I didn't want to leave here without well, a medal, and uh, I fell short of the gold, but, you know, Jesus Christ helped me get through that bronze medal match, and uh, it was awesome. My dad always talks about going overseas, and to actually experience it is just a blessing. It's, a, it's been awesome. What you expected? Yeah, definitely what I expected. I got to tell you, honestly, Tony, I had Carr winning gold. I think if we could do it all over again, perhaps both these guys would win gold. But overall, a really nice performance from both. Yeah, I think Carr raised his stock greatly this summer with his freestyle abilities. You know, it certainly didn't hurt him to uh, come away with not a gold medal here in Georgia. But uh, the guy that I was most impressed with here, Jacob Warner. Really? Uh, you know, he lost in criteria. To, you know, he didn't wasn't able to go to the finals, but. This is somebody I think is college ready. He has the this style. He holds the center really well. He holds his ties really well. Good with underhooks. He's like a typical grinder. He's like an Iowa grinder. I feel like he's going to be an Iowa guy. He's really high on them. So uh, 
that would be something that I think is going to be pretty successful at the college level, can transition right away. All right, we'll have more from the Cadet World Championships after this timeout. You're watching GWN, sponsored by Defense Soap. Right now, get any large original or flatbread Supreme Pizza for only $13.99. Casey's, famous for pizza. At Cookies, sauces and seasonings are business, but food is our passion. Our secret ingredient is Cookies Flavor Enhancer and All-Purpose Seasoning. It makes pretty much everything taste better. You can use it on meats and in marinades, veggies and seafood. Try it on pasta and even popcorn. Pick up a bottle at your local grocer and enhance the flavor of your favorite foods. Cookies For more ideas and recipes, visit cookiesbbq.com. Cookies is the one. generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. All right, welcome back to Global Wrestling News. Our coverage of the Cadet World Championships continue. We go to the final session. That's where we found world champs Yanni Dikamahalis and Gable Stevenson as they became the first Americans ever to win back-to-back -back Cadet World titles. We start with Dikamahalis. He cleaned out the 63 kilo field, outscoring his opponents 52 to six with three of five victories coming by technical superiority. In the gold medal match, Dick Mahalis shut out Moldova's two-time European medalist, Stefan Tanu, 8-0. So winning this one, winning your second one, what does that do for you from a mental standpoint, from a confidence standpoint, from a, like when you go back home, what does that mean? It shows me I'm ready for the junior level. It shows me maybe I'm ready to start wrestling senior level guys. I'll take my losses here and there, but I think this World Championships Shows me that I'm ready to I'm ready to be finished with cadets. I'm ready to move on. And I'm prepared for the next level. So it's good to know that moving forward. I think it may be too early to compare this kid to Kyle Snyder, but a guy can hope and a guy can dream, right? Uh, what, I, what I take away from listening to, to Yanni, watching him wrestle, his confidence is all-time high. I mean, he, he looks like he's already ready to step on a college match. He, he's committed to go to Cornell, so he's going to get thrown to the wolves right away as a true freshman. I, I feel like he's ready. Um, you know, as far as uh, comparing him to Snyder, pretty hard to say. You know, he's not, he's, he's a young kid. Uh, I would say uh, compare him from a senior level to maybe a cadet level. You know, he's winning world titles, so he, he obviously put him in the same discussion. But, uh, you know, Yanni has been winning these titles against cadet level kids. Right high school kids so it's a huge huge difference so um, depending on uh, you know if, if Yanni can keep that offense keep that um, aggressiveness where he's, he's not giving up points at the junior at the senior level he, we can we can put him in the talk with Kyle Snyder you say point. we're gonna throw him to the wolves I feel sorry for the wolves <laughs> <laughs> all right Gable Stevenson got off to a fast start scoring back-to-back -back shutouts over I shot Rish Nayan of Armenia and Samid Kurban of Turkey a 5-1 victory over India put him back into the finals. That's where he gave up an early push out. But he answered the phone. He answered the call with a takedown, a step up, and a turn, defeating Russia's Adam Bertabiev. Gable man, uh, talk to you in Akron. All you said was Cadet World Champ. You pulled it off today. How's it feel? Um, I've been working 
every day, all summer for this, no breaks. And I told y'all back in June I was gonna win it, and I still I stuck with my word, and just I won it like five minutes ago, and it feels good. So how's how's the second one feel? Does it feel as good as the first, or you feel better? I feel better, man. No one else has done this. It's just me and Yanni. This is it. Tony, did he actually smile? Yeah, I mean, this was a, a grind match. He won a one five to one, and. Uh, Usually when we see him win matches, he's just never happy. But uh, we did see him crack a little smile. This was uh, great to see him go back to back. We mentioned early him and Yanni, a group here, two guys that have never been able to do this. And what makes him so successful right now is, you know, he just is a is a bigger bigger man than some of these cadet guys. So I want to see that transition into the junior level. Confidence is there, but uh, he, he definitely has some work to do to get to that point. It's going to be interesting to see where he ends up going to school as well. Minnesota was probably the favorite, but I highly doubt that's still the case. Well, you would think that with all the, the issues up in Minnesota, you know, that it might be a, probably an issue, but his brother's up there. His brother's up there, so that's going to have a heavy influence. That's where he's from. But Ro Roman Bravo Young is kind of like his sidekick. They've right. said that they're going to go to the same school together. So I know he's looking out west, so it'll be interesting to see uh, where these two land. Yanni might be in there, too. Those two, uh, you know, if he maybe decommits from Cornell, don't see it happening, but those two have a, a pretty special bond. Well, Travis Whitlake was pinned in the second round, but he rebounded with three victories in the repage and took home the bronze at 76 kilos. Facing Japan's Shitaro Yamada, Whitlake ran out to an early four-point lead. Yamada would eventually tie the score, but gave up a point on a failed challenge, giving Whitlake the 5-4 victory. You know, I had a little bit of both sides, but it was a, it was a good tournament. Um, you know, coming, coming into this, I was, I was prepared to win a world title. I was really excited. Um, I believed I could do it, you know, and I still believe that I should be a world champ right now. Um, I mean, I had one, one little mistake, you know, I picked up that single and I had him on the out-bounds line and, and he had that kid in, hitting that flip on me and he caught me on my back and pinned me, but, uh, you know, it was, it was an eye-opener, it was, it was a, a good lesson, so, um, you know, and to come back from something like that is, is you know, is a great reward. I mean, here's another guy that's right on the edge of it all, Tony. Elite, I think so. Travis Whitlake, a name that you got to respect. Yeah, I mean, since the Fargo title that he got, Whitlake has been on my radar. This is going to be uh, the real test uh, to come back after getting pinned to pick up a bronze, even, you know, on the on the, the blown call uh, to get that extra point. It's still, it, it's still an impressive performance. He's just so he, he's unbelievable from his feet. That's where he's he's the most aggressive. Right. I mean, that's where we, we want him to be, and that's going to transition over to folk style really well. So get one up to that junior level with all these guys. I think they just need a little bit more work on their defense. Well, let's take a look at the team race. Russia won the title with 69 points, followed by Team USA just two points back. Azerbaijan and Georgia tied for third with 47. We talked with Coach Brandon Slay of Team USA. All right, Coach Slay, we had two gold, one bronze on the day. We finished in second in the team race. Talk about the team, talk about the guys. I mean, great performance. Yeah, I think they ended up with 69 points. We had 67 points, close team race. We didn't score as many points today as we really wanted to and needed to to win the team title. Um, but the last time I checked, there's, you know, there's only one planet that has people living on it, and this group got second on that planet as a group of young men, 15 to 17 year olds, and I'm really, really proud of their overall effort as a team. You know, another thing that, that I'm really proud of is that you know, Russia, um, they had two champions, we had three champions. So yeah, they beat us overall as a team, but we had more gold medals you know, than they did. And so that's something that you know, as Team USA, as we leave here, we can be, um, you know, we can be proud of and excited about. More GWN after this short timeout, stay tuned. Homemade crust, fresh meats and vegetables, 100% real mozzarella. There ain't nothing like the smell of a homemade pizza when it comes out of the oven. Of course, those pine tree air fresheners smell pretty darn good too. Casey's, famous for pizza. Introducing your favorite dip on a pizza. Pick up the all new spinach artichoke chicken pizza today. 
Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green, but cost effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. All right, welcome back to Global. You've heard, of course, the name Somar Wrestling. No? Well, if you haven't, you will soon because Richard Ramos has a brand new pro event coming to you October 15th. He joins us now. Richard, how are you? Doing great. Great. How are you? Doing great. Uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, Somar Wrestling. Uh, Somar Wrestling um, really started out as something that I was using to try to grow opportunities for girls wrestling actually out here in California, which seems kind of odd because we're the most participated uh, state in the, in the union. But um, yeah, I started it basically because I was a single dad with custody of my daughter, uh, even though she had beaten some Fargo All-Americans, some Fargo National Champs. Uh, we didn't have the money to uh, to do some of the things and get some of the exposure that uh, I felt like she could have helped her in the long run. So just thinking about what I could do to try to help other people maybe who are financially strapped to get some opportunities. I started to put together things like a camp with the only female uh, head coach in all of college wrestling to Cara Montgomery. And then that led into college combines that we now see them doing with the boys and then uh, into dual tournaments, takedown tournaments with the girls. And now to be honest, I'm going to, I'm trying to use the exposure of the elite male athlete to build some exposure for the female athlete. Uh, you know, I mean, we have, some of the athletes that we have in, in the lineup are female and they, and they are the best females, some of the best females we can get. We're trying to get some good, uh, cheap training for some, from, for some kids that really deserved it. So the, the, the pro match that you're featuring at this event, Reese Humphrey, BJ Futrell, then Jason Ness versus Jordan Oliver, and then Hale, Haley Aguello versus Victoria Anthony. What are the uh, exact uh, rules for this event? Okay, uh, the rules for the event, uh, we, we structured it, kind of followed uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you know, the Eddie Bravo rules, and uh, just thought about, you know, what, what could we do to try to make wrestling a little bit more fan-friendly for the casual fan? And it was to try to bring out as much action as we could. So we developed these rules. We think that they're going to work really good in terms of trying to bring out the action. So it's two one-and-a-half-minute periods with a 30-second break in between. And the first to five takedowns. So if you score five takedowns, the match is over, whether it's the first period or the second period, as long as it's before the three minutes regulation period, you'll, uh, you'll, you can win the match. If it gets to three minutes, of course, we'll go by the score. If it's three takedowns as opposed to two takedowns, well, that person with the three takedowns wins. But if it's tied, we're going into a uh, unlimited time, sudden victory. So, and, and really to try to incentivize action, what we did is we decided that we're going to pay the athletes a flat rate and then to win is 50%. So if you win, you get a 50% bonus. And then if you win before that three minute regulation, you get another 50%. So you double your money. Do you see this as, as a one-time event or is this a structure that you feel like could turn into a, a pro league or more pro events like the Somar wrestling? Um, I would like the Somar shootout to, to take off and really, grow we 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 have some really really elite athletes that we've spoken with um 
you know, we've, we've touched base with, with Nashawn Garrett. Um, I've been talking to uh, some people that are involved with uh, Joey Davis and Antonio McKees. Uh, you know, I made a call out to Kyle Dake. Um, some of these guys to really try to touch base. We want it to grow. I'm hoping it'll grow, um, you know, and don't, don't get it uh, confused either. You know, we're not looking to necessarily make money. We're putting this money back into the kids. For instance, with this event, uh, every five dollars, uh, we take five dollars off of every ticket sale, and we put it directly back into either the host school, which is uh, Mount Sac College out here in California, it's a junior college. Uh, so, in an instance where it's you know fifteen hundred seat event, you know times five five dollars each, it, it adds up pretty quick, you know. Or, or uh, for those doing the pre-sale, if let's say uh, you have a, a child who's, who's wrestling and they have a spirit pack, and their spirit pack is fifty bucks, well. Let's say 10 people, you know, buy tickets and they put, you know, the, the child's name in there in the club that they're in. We send that club $50 in the name of that child. So that way they get to raise some money and, and it makes it more affordable. Because like I said, I want to help kids. I want to help the growth of the sport. And those are the two, my two core foundations for trying to do something like this. Sounds great. Well, we will uh, be looking at these matches a little bit more in depth as the weeks come, but uh, we appreciate you what you're doing for wrestling and coming here on Global Wrestling News today, Richard. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Oh, and if your uh, viewers can can please follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Somar Wrestle, uh, not wrestling, wrestle. Uh, we, we update all of our stuff. There's pictures up there of our former, our past events and what we have coming up. When we come back, it's time for Quick Hits, right here on GWN, sponsored by McBride Mass. wants to show you three great ways to make your home more comfortable. Install a hybrid solar home system, utilizing solar power in the day, battery power at night. Install a solar attic fan to reduce heat and moisture from your attic. And install a multi-layer reflective insulation blanket in your attic to reduce the cost of heating and cooling. Conserve energy, save money, protect the environment with Yellow Blue Ecotech. Learn more ways at yellowbluetech.com. Speed the Sauce Man here. While sauces and seasons are our business, food is our passion. And we've been helping make your favorite foods taste better for years. Try our wings and things hot sauce and everything from chicken wings to your morning eggs. Use it in recipes like spicy chicken noodle dinner, party dip, and buffalo chicken pizza. It's not only delicious, but it's award winning too. Wings and things recently earned first place honors in the hot sauce category at the National Barbecue Association's Award of Excellence competition. Remember, smart cookies use cookies. Proudly made in the USA, Danmar offers incredible protection and customized gear. I'm Tony Ramos, NCAA champion and world team member. Take my word that Danmar Warrior headgear is the best. It's what I use. Look for my limited edition signature headgear at a retailer near you or online at danmarwarrior.com. I'm a world-class warrior and you can be one too with Danmar. Follow me on Twitter at T underscore Ram 133 or on my website teamramos.co. All right, welcome back. It's time for Quick Hits. Big recruiting news now. Two-time Ohio State champ Mitch Moore from St. Paris Graham. You've heard of them, Tony. He's verbally committed to Virginia Tech. He's the number 12 overall recruit in the class of 2018. I know his brother Brent is on the roster, so probably kind of expected this, right? Yeah, Moore's a top talent, no doubt. And I don't I don't think that he was uh, you know, never an option for other schools. You know, he, he gave look to others, but VTech, this is somebody that they were heavy on. When you recruit a brother, you're hoping to get the other brother package deal 132 138 i'm not sure where he's going to end up the year probably will slot in there about 133 for uh the Hokies. all right well since the announcement he's been talking some serious smack to the number one ranked jason renteria yeah straight just called him out on social media said anytime any place but hey we asked more to wrestle him at the night of conflict turned it down why first renteria said no hey i'm gonna go i want to re reach him out 
at the Iron Man, making sure that happens. Well, Renteria now, after all the smack talk, Moore says he wants to bring bring it on before that. Who's number one? Night of Conflict. Reach them both out. Nothing happened. No match. Hopefully we're going to see that Iron Man, though. But this I, Twitter beef, I think, is good for wrestling. I love Twitter beefs. I really do. All right, the smack talk is what we've been talking about. You think it's what our sport needs. I think as long as we keep it in a classy way, what are your thoughts? There's mixed reviews. The traditionalists out there saying that all the smack talk is just not what our sport is about, blah, blah, blah. It's just, <laughs> at the end of the day, you know, now that Iron Man match, if it happens there, if, if in fact, Renteria and more do wrestle at that, the ratings have increased 100% because everybody was talking about it. I mean, um, my trending. projection on ratings increased 98%, hey. so we're off by two. All right, next topic. Did you see this? Russian wrestling coach hits UWW official during Junior World Finals. I mean, this is insane. The Mongolian protest was one thing, and the UWW comes down on them. This coach slaps and pushes the UWW official. Tell me something has got to come down on top of Russia after this. I mean, wh what can we expect? Uh, from the UWW. Everything that ha has happened here, the UW UWW came down on Mongolia, gave them right. a three-year ban just for the coaches, but Russia seems to always get out of this stuff. They had the doping charges. We know that something was going on. They still were able to wrestle in the Olympics. So with the, the Mongolian coaches getting this three-year ban, something has to happen to this coach, to Russia, right away. Otherwise, there's going to be uh, lots of uh, protests. I mean, can you imagine Wayne Boyd going up and slapping a UWW <laughs> official? Well, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. And he is Holloway Wayne Boyd. And it's something out of like a WWF type match you'd see. But I mean, if, if, if and Wayne Boyd or any U.S. coach did this, would there be outrage throughout the whole wrestling community? Russia does it. You in the United States is really upset, but no one else seems to be upset about this. We got to come down on Russia. This is what are we teaching our youth? Because if the coaches get away with it, the kids are going to get away with it. And then just the corruption and the the nasty wrestling is going to continue. All right, we'll get Wayne Boyd on in future shows to get his opinion on this and more. That's what's trending around the sport of wrestling. For Tony Hager, I'm Scott Casper. See you next week right here on Global Wrestling News.